In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. In order to make better sense of today's gospel reading, which is actually part of a larger story that began two Sundays ago, we need to cast our minds back to the feeding of the multitude when Jesus miraculously fed the crowd with just five loaves and two fish. In many ways, the feeding of the multitude resembles what we do each week at the Eucharist. During the offertory, and especially when we were still able to partake of both bread and wine at communion, a small amount of bread and wine, hardly a meal by any standards, are presented to feed the entire congregation. The priest takes them, gives thanks, and distributes them, just as Jesus did with the five loaves and two fish. Unlike ordinary bread and ordinary wine, as if by a miracle, a bite-sized piece of bread and a tiny sip of the wine is enough to satisfy or at least touch the deepest hunger and thirst of everyone in the congregation. And not only is there enough of the bread and wine to go around, but there are also leftovers, which are similarly gathered and even reserved in the ombre. Hopefully the parallels end when it comes to the crowds and ourselves, because we are told that the crowds were following Jesus because of the signs they saw him doing. They took interest in Jesus because of what he could do for them, not for who he is. As such, even though they listened to his words and shared in the meal he prepared for them, they still managed to misunderstand who Jesus is. And they failed to grasp the significance of why he fed them in the way that he did. Because of this, we are told Jesus withdrew from them since their enthusiasm was for something that he was not. The miraculous feeding of the multitude was intended to be a revelation of Jesus's identity as the son of God and was an outward sign of what Jesus declares in today's gospel reading. I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Put simply, Jesus wants to give us radically new appetites. Jesus wants to change what we crave and hunger for and what we turn to for nourishment and satisfaction. As one popular and contemporary Christian author explains, hunger and thirst are natural expressions of the basic human desire and need for food and drink. One of the clear indicators that something is wrong physically is when we lose our appetite. It is the same spiritually. To hunger and thirst for God is at the very root of our being. It's the way God made us. When there is no hunger for the presence of God, it is an indicator that something is wrong spiritually. Because that hunger is so basic to human nature, it often finds fulfillment in other areas rather than seeking God. Much as health, eating unhealthy food can dull physical appetite, so that which is not of God can dull our spiritual appetite. And he goes on to say, this happens to non-Christians or non-believers as they look for happiness and fulfillment in any area except in their relationship with God. It may be in human relationships, quest for power or money, 
or escape to physical pleasure. The saddest examples, however, are when Christians, fellow believers, allow their appetite for God to be dulled by other things, even religious things. Our churches, for example, are filled with believers who are so satisfied by activities and programs and rosters and projects, but in actual fact, they no longer have a thirst or hunger for God. So many Christians today, it can be said, snack their way throughout the day on junk food activities, and they find no time to feast with God. We complain about our busyness and tiredness, but that is typically a spiritual problem more than a problem of schedule. We desire everything except God. We take God in small doses throughout the day and week and somehow hope that on Sunday we can catch up on our time with the Lord. In the Eucharist, Jesus both transforms and satisfies our appetites. To partake of the Eucharist is therefore no simple or easy task. By opening our hands to receive the blessings of Christ's body, we are also opening ourselves in faith and obedience to whatever God gives us and asks of us. By taking hold of the sacrament, we are letting go of everything else that competes with Christ for our devotion and attachment. To say amen to the body of Christ is to say amen to becoming what we receive. It means saying yes to the ongoing process and the inner work it takes to grow more and more into the body of Christ, into the likeness of Jesus. It involves a change in what we crave for and in what we feed or choose to feed our hearts and minds with. And it requires us to move from saying that Jesus is a part of my life to saying Jesus is my life. To assume that our participation or to assume that what we do here at the Eucharist requires anything less of us is to, like the crowds, misunderstand Jesus because we look no further than the signs that point us to him. So as we approach the Lord's table this morning, this day, and also in the future, may we take these thoughts with us and also the following prayer with us. Jesus, may all that is you flow into me. May your body and blood be my food and drink. May your suffering and death be my strength and my life. Jesus, with you by my side, enough has been given. May the shelter I seek be the shadow of your cross. Let me not run from the love which you offer, but keep calling to me until that day comes when I, with your saints, shall see you face to face. Amen.